The Holy Trinity of Watchmaking. Who are they and why are they so important? Let's break it down. The Holy Trinity is three modern legends of watchmaking that are still here today, still producing watches, and uh, have a great, um, a great wake of uh, iconic timepieces and collectors. Patek Philippe, Audemars Piguet, and Vacheron Constantine. Th these are the three long-standing brands, manufacturers that have been labeled the Holy Trinity. All these three brands are partnerships, right? Patek Philippe, Vacheron Constantine, Audemars Piguet, two, you know, two partners, who founded each brand. Vacheron Constantine, one of the oldest brands, 1755, uh, been uh, producing, you know, iconic pieces from the jump. And again, we're, so the, this is a time period where like watchmaking is so, so fresh and, you know, it's really going from clock making to, to slowly down to pocket watches and watches are still things that are made for royalty and at a very, very high level. Not everybody's walking around with a watch in the 1700s, right? Um, so 1755 is when they start. Um, I believe Audemars Piguet starts around 18. 1875 and Patek Philippe is uh, like 1850s or some somewhere in there as well. So everybody starts, you know, before the 1900s, really when watchmaking was still a very true art form. When you know craftsmanship really, craftsmen, you know, when you were 13, you went and you apprenticed and you worked underneath the watchmaker and you developed your own watchmaking philosophy and uh, how you want to design and, and make things. And so the, the real important thing with the Holy Trinity is that they all foundationally were historic watch brands that started in little communities that were one or two watchmakers that slowly had visions whether to be you know the, the best movements or the most complicated movements they were always you know on the cutting edge of delivering for their customers and because their customers were royalty or you know, government officials, things like that. There wasn't big multi-brand retailers where you go and you see a bunch of different watches. Watch brands literally had to like come and see you, the consumer, or at a watch fair, or at some type of international fair where they could show their products. So it's still a very intimate look, and these three brands in particular had a, a shoe-in with royalty in different countries and people in, you know, that, that higher realm of, of living, let's say that. I like to compare it to the 1992 Dream Team. That was, you know, Michael Jordan, Karl Malone, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. The really important thing about that team is that they captured the audience, right? It captured people all, all around the world who love basketball and seeing this team that beat everybody on an average of 44 points. Now, you could say we could make a 2019 uh, Dream Team and we could put um, LeBron and we could put Kyrie Irving and we could put all, all these great players in it who play amazing basketball, but it still won't give you that effect of that 1992 team because it was a different time and the way basketball was played was different and the, 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 the important thing of professional players finally being able to play in the Olympics and the whole the whole time spectrum was just different so while you can try to compare and swap in players it just doesn't change what that original dream team was and that's the thing with the Holy Trinity the Holy Trinity first of all all three brands made for over 100 years continuously no interruptions you take a brand like Jaeger for instance yes they've been in production of movements and watches for a very, very long time, but there was a good share of that where they were just making movements, you know, not just, not not focusing on watches as well. For Elanga, they did have an interruption and continuation. So there are, there are other brands that you could definitely play around and swap, but there's nothing that would be the Holy Trinity, just that there'll never be a basketball team you could put together that would be as impactful as the 1992 uh, Olympic Dream Team. The difference between a very nice watch that costs let's say $2,000 and a very, very nice watch that costs $40,000, right? Let's say they both are time-only watches. Um, they both do the same things. It may both look the same. The difference is how they're created and how those movements are finished. So in a $1,000 watch, let's take today, it might be something that might be machine assembled. Um, it might look good. The case might fit well. It might do its job really, really great. A $40,000 watch, the case might be handmade, definitely hand polished. The movements, most of the parts are handmade or made with machinery that's been made for you know, you know, hundreds of years, literally. 
every single part on these movements are hand finished and they're finished to a level that is above you know the, the ordinary oh okay it just looks good a lot of these brands are finished to the level that if you were to take a loop and just stare or a microscope and stare at these movements you'd see that every single corner is polished every single screw has its own little finish to it no corner of the watch has left been left undone if, if i had to to do this, the, the cq holy trinity um i should make a t-shirt with that uh the cq holy trinity we have to put patek philippe um up there the reason why you have to put patek philippe again they've been making watches so long they've been at the top of the game for so long economies go up economies go down patek philippe stays firm so you definitely got to keep patek philippe there just kind of think their, their design ethics and what you know my thinking of a holy trinity being is the quality of the craftsmanship the quality of the product and the stewardship of the brand is very very strong so i definitely put up uh, paddock up there um you know I, I like to put jlc up there because i think jlc jaeger is um uh, definitely a brand that is deserving of being part of the holy trinity because of the quality of watches that they make at the price point that they make which they could definitely two to three times their retail and still be sometimes justifiable in that because of the product they're making and i think they make a such a wide variety of products where everything in the movement is made by themselves by them where even like on the class and, and for the sports model there's so many patents and i think they're a brand that really pushes the boundaries of watchmaking and hey how can we do this better how can we find that so i say paddock jlc and um the, 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 the third is really tough because a lot of people would say put in Rolex here, but I think Rolex is a great luxury brand. But when I think Holy Trinity, I, I think, you know, Rolex is in its own category as being just a nice, really nice sports watch. I'd actually, you know, I'd keep AP in there, uh, Audemars Piguet, because uh, while many people might say, hey, they're stuck to, the, to Royal Oak and, you know, they're only stuck to one line, I would say that um, AP has a capability to make a, a wider array of watches. They know how to sell their watches and you can not um, deny the quality of the timepieces, the quality of the finishing. And again, the history is there. There are a lot of other brands that I would say like a side note, like Laurent Ferrier, you could say um, is a newer brand that one day might get there, but again, it's only like 20 years old. So it's hard, Effie Jorn would be a brand that I'd say would be in the new Holy Trinity as well, um, because the, the quality of the watch is so good. But again, will it test time? Will it stand the test of time? Will it be able to handle hundreds of years? That's the thing with the Holy Trinity brand. These are brands that have been around continuously for hundreds of years. Whether they be under the same ownership or not, the factories have still been producing watches and they never cease production. So that that's an important thing. And honestly, there's not many brands out there that you can say, has been going, you know, from day one to now without a major interruption for more than a year or something like that. So it's really hard to like think of another brand that you put in that you want to, you know, Breguet is a brand that you want to like toss around. But again, it's it, it, it's been through so many changes. And while the heritage of Breguet, I think that should be the one above the Holy Trinity because the history of Breguet is so deep and it's done so much for the industry. But at the moment, I'd say CQ's Holy Trinity, um, Paddock, AP, and I just throw in JLC. And that's my my take on the holy trinity of watchmaking what's your holy trinity let me know in the comments below or dm me on instagram if you like my video please let me know feel free to comment like and subscribe definitely check out my other videos and many more coming soon